in brightest day and blackest... Wait, how's this thing working again? This is gonna be a tough one, and it doesn't stop there. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the whole spectrum of lanterns, from green to black. That's what, nine different lantern rings? Whoo-wee! Well, anyway, you've gotta admit, the question begs to be answered. What the heck is a lantern ring, and how does it even work? So in real life, a lantern ring itself is pretty theoretical, all things considered. It's a ring that can do basically anything and make things out of energy. Wait a minute. Energy. That's what we're looking for. See, there exists a theory, called Bell's Theory, that states that once two entities or objects connect, there will always be an energy linking those two. Remember, all this is just theoretical. Bell's Theory has yet to be proven. However, it is a good explanation for how the ring works. There must be some kind of connection between the ring and the wearer, and Bell's theory explains that pretty well. But what does this connection actually do? So you've got an energy linking you and an object. By that logic, the ring isn't special at all. Your pretty glass cup could do what a lantern ring does, or your Rubik's Cube can do what a lantern ring does. Well, there's more to it than that. See, the energy linking you and the ring is way more than you think. There are a lot of theories out there that support the idea of matter being energy like Einstein's theory of relativity. Basically, if matter is energy, then literally everything is energy, and states of matter don't exactly exist as we see them. For instance, a rock is considered solid and dense, while water is considered liquid and loose. However, according to those theories, nothing is solid and nothing is liquid. There are just different wavelengths and frequencies of energy in different types of quote-unquote states. Explained in a more basic way, the only difference between that rock and that water is that they give off their energy in different ways. So if everything is energy, then you are too. You are pure energy, meaning your body is energy, meaning your mind is energy, meaning your emotions are energy. Anyone see where this is going? At the same time, if everything is energy, then the ring is energy. So it's pretty simple to imagine how your emotions are linked to the ring. It's Bell's theory. Since you and your emotions and your mind are the same energy, and the ring has made contact with that energy, your mind and emotions, as well as your body, are forever linked to that ring through some other form of energy. But that still doesn't explain how the ring can do all the cool things it can. However, there is an equation that does. Consciousness equals energy. Now, that might be a bit too much to handle. I know for me it was really sudden to hear something like that. For those who don't know, consciousness is... Well, I don't really know if anyone can really tell you what it is. I guess in the most basic way, it's what makes us alive. It's what makes us have minds, have thoughts, have feelings. It's what separates us from dirt, basically. All life has some form of consciousness. But if consciousness is energy, and everything is energy, is everything around us, everything, alive? Thankfully for our mental health, no. The equation really only works one way. Consciousness equals energy, but energy does not equal consciousness. Think of it like that water we were talking about earlier. Seawater, specifically, is blue, but not everything blue is seawater. See what I mean? Consciousness is a form of energy, but not all energy is a form of consciousness. But that doesn't mean some things aren't alive. Sit down for this one, because it's going to make you stand up. It's entirely possible that the lantern rings are alive. It makes sense, think about it. How would the lantern ring know what to do based on the energy connection it has with you? You know what that reminds me of? The way your brain sends messages to the rest of your body to move. Your mind is sending energy messages to the ring based on your emotions, and the ring does operations depending on those messages. The only way that could work is if the ring is alive. There's even theories about, call me crazy, UFOs and all that being 
I should say form of life, really, because that's what the theory says, that some UFOs are oddly some form of life. I'll link this video in the description that I saw on this Fact or Fake show one time. It was actually a fairly good and plausible show. And it begins to state the theory that possibly there are UFOs that are somehow cellular rather than actual objects. I'll let the video explain that, and you can make your own deductions based off of that. Now, don't get me wrong, if the Lantern Rings are alive, they're pretty basic forms of life. Even though they can do tremendous things with their own energy, they have little to no thoughts, desires, or wants of their own. The ring simply obeys the messages that the wearer's emotions send to it. And the thing is, different emotions give off different wavelengths, and there are a lot of different types of rings. Like I mentioned, there's a total of nine different types of rings that I could find. Yellow rings run on fear, so high levels of emotional stress. Basically, the ring responds to your fight or flight response, which is an evolutionary trait found in animals and humans. Red rings run on rage, more specifically, emotional chaos. When your mind just can't think straight and your wavelengths are completely on the fritz, the red ring responds. Orange rings run on greed, so an emotional desire without empathy. Blue rings run on hope, which could be described as an emotional feeling of positivity, with a dash of negativity. Indigo rings run on empathy, while violet rings run on love, which is kind of like an overwhelming empathy. Really, love is hard to explain, but that's the closest you can really get to it. Finally, we've got the last three. Black rings, green rings, and white rings. Green rings run on willpower, which could be described as emotional endurance and focus, so really, they would run on extremely stable wavelengths. Black rings run on quote-unquote death, which isn't an emotion. However, feeling quote-unquote dead is. Black rings respond to overwhelming negativity in the mind. Finally, we come to white rings. Honestly, I've got no clue how these things work. I wasn't able to find anything on it. I'm thinking of doing a video dedicated to it, so let me know if you guys want to see that. I'm actually also thinking of doing a video on possibly how lantern rings could be made, so if you guys want to see that too, let me know in the comments. So that's it for this one guys. Green Lantern case solved. Rings? Alive. Green Lantern possible? No clue. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Science Behind Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and make sure to leave a comment as to what superhero or supervillain you guys want to see me do in the future. This episode was suggested by Zane Little once again. I think this is the third suggestion that I've got from him, and I've still got one more from him coming down the pipeline, so props to him for so many great suggestions. Seriously, he's a friend of mine, guys, so go subscribe to him. He does great stuff on his channel. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. Have a good one.